Hello, this is Chaplain Bob. We are going to do a quick study on Proverbs chapter 1, God Laughed. It is the Proverbs of King Solomon. Solomon was the son of King David, you know, David and Goliath. So, what is, but before we do that, what does God say about Solomon and his wisdom. Well, in 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 30, we read, And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. 1 Kings 5.12 And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him, and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and they two made a league together. I believe Hiram was king of Tyrus. I think that was Tyrus. The um, Masonic Lodge has a big to-do about Hiram. Uh, I wouldn't believe any of it, but, um, you know, they take Bible stuff and then put their own little spin on it. So, 1 Kings 4.34 and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. How about Jesus in Matthew 12 and verse 42? The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. As great as Solomon was, Christ was greater than Solomon. So let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity to give subtlety to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion all right let's take a look real quick at second chronicles chapter one we're going to start in oh verse seven now king david had just recently died solomon had taken over as being king so Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 7. I'm sorry. Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 7. I think I said that. Okay. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Boy, you know, uh, the Muslims have a thing about, you know, the genie and the lamp. You rub the lamp and the genie comes out and offers to give you three wishes. Well, here it is, the creator of heaven and earth says to Solomon, Ask what I shall give thee. Boy, uh, let's see, what would you ask for? A, a hot, hot looking spouse? A million dollars? What, what are you going to ask for? Verse 8, And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. And we're talking about uh, reign as in rule, not water that falls from the sky, right? Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Uh, you know, those are two different things. You could have a lot of knowledge, but being able to put it to good use is wisdom. That's, that's the difference. Just because you know a lot of useless facts as knowledge, that's what good is that? But if you could take knowledge and put it to good use, that's wisdom. I mean, you might... Uh, know what every uh, suppose somebody took a car completely apart 
and you had knowledge of every single part, oh yeah, this is a transmission, this is an engine, uh, this is a carburetor or fuel injector, this is the seat belt, you know, you know everything about, you have knowledge about that car. But can you put it back together? That's wisdom. Can you take the parts, put them back together so that the vehicle would run? That's the difference between knowledge, knowing what the parts are and maybe what they do, and wisdom, being able to put them back together. Okay? And Solomon says, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither hast yet neither yet hast asked long life, but thou hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and See, when you seek first the things of God, what does he do? Check this out. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon to Jerusalem, from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. See, that's why the, the Bible, the good book says, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see, that is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't be thinking that, you know, keeping laws and commandments and uh, are going to give you any righteousness. No, they're not. They're not going to give you righteousness. Uh, being obedient is one thing, but you're, our righteousness is not by keeping laws. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So let's go back to Proverbs. I think you, hopefully you catch my drift here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, starting in verse, eh, we'll go back to 4. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So what's a fool? Well, in Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. April's Fool's Day. That's uh, National Atheist Day. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. All right, let's go back to Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. And we're not talking about chains of bondage. I, I, personally, I think they're talking about chains of gold. But that's just my opinion. Verse 10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So if evil people try to, you know, give you, uh, try to get you to do something that's evil, don't do it. Don't consent to them. Verse 11, 
If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. In other words, they want to be robbers, highway robbers. They want to wait by the side, and when the unweary, unwary come by, they, they kill them and steal their goods. Outlaws, right? What do they call them? Highway robbers, bandits, pirates. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that, as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Yeah, they're going to steal. They're going to steal everything from everybody else instead of working for it. Verse 14, cast in thy lot among us. Oh yeah, come with us. We'll, you know, we'll all uh, be in this together. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. What is shedding blood? They kill these poor innocent people. 17. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. See, they think they're setting traps for others, but really they're setting traps for themselves. Because when they're visited in the that day by the Lord, that's it's over, right? So are the ways of everyone that is greedy for gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. All right, verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? What kind of knowledge do fools hate? Things like the commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, things. That's the kind of knowledge fools hate. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. What does it reproof means? Uh, it's sort of like getting a spanking. Turn you at my reproof. In other words, when you're uh, when a child acts up bad and gets a spanking, they well, attitude adjustment, right? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. So people that pay attention to the Lord, the Lord says, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. You see, people, if you spend all your time in the Bible instead of watching television, you'll learn something. I mean, every time I pick up when I study the Word or get ready to do a study, I find something I'd never seen before. Even though I've read, you know, read the whole book cover to cover, I'll find something new every single time. And, you know, it doesn't make me smart or special or anything. It's just, that's just how it is. I've had people say, well, I don't understand it. Well, whose fault is that? I mean, you know who's doing who on the soap operas or... You, you know what what game, uh, who won what uh, ball game, you know, last night. I mean, come on. You know, God, you think God and the angels care about who wins the Super Bowl? Uh, I don't think so. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you if you study. 
He will. Verse 24. Now, now, before just what we just read was for believers. Now, this, this warning is going to now start for unbelievers. Verse 24. Because I have called, the Lord called, because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have said it not. Not means nothing. But ye have said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. In other words, I spanked you, and you kept doing the same thing. But ye have said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh, laugh at your calamity. Boy, that, that's some harsh words, huh? God's going to laugh at their calamity. I also will laugh at your calamity. What's calamity? A destruction. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When, when, when these people are in fear for losing their lives and going to hell forever, God's going to mock them. Why? Because he, tried, he called them and they ignored him. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. What is that? A tornado? When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You know, in all honesty, there is really no atheists. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 1, verse, starting in verse 18. Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. People, look around if you don't believe there's a creator. I mean, come on. Can you imagine you look at a train and you're going to tell me that that train got there over millions and millions and millions of years. And the human body is infinitely more complex than a train or an airplane. And yet people will say that it evolved. Where did God come from? I don't know. I have no idea. He didn't tell me in this, in this word. I, I, I have no idea. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. 
See, they didn't glorify God, they were unthankful, and their imaginations were vain or worthless, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Let's take a look at Psalms 58 for real quick. Psalms 58, verse 1. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. And if those of you who don't know it, the deaf adder is a, uh, a very, very deadly snake. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth, the young lions, O Lord, let them melt away as waters which run continually when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows. Let him be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind both living and in his wrath. What's a whirlwind? Tornado, people, right? Verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Believe me, people, by the time the Lord returns, people are going to be, his people are going to be begging for the Lord to return. Things are going to be bad. And when the Lord finally does return, and in the book of Revelation, it talks about the, the blood's going to be up to the horse's bridle. I mean, you're talk, that's a lot of blood, people. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.